Thank you very much. What I'm going to do is to talk about next generation wireless for India, talk a little bit more specifically on India, and in that context also talk about some of the activities that we are doing at, at the institute at IIT Madras, Chennai. I think one of the things that has come up repeatedly in about India um, is that India is a very, very young nation. About 70% of our population is less than 35. And the other important thing that I wanted to point out that the progress that we have been talking about since the morning is reflecting in everywhere, including you see the literacy rate is increasing, the incomes are increasing. Overall, there is a fairly positive atmosphere that India has. It's a much more confident country than it was 10 to 15 years back. Having said that, however, when we talk about India, we must understand a very important reality about India. And this is what are the current income levels. If I take a billion people, divide them into about 300 million urban and 700 million rural people, you see the urban people, they, most of the households do not have income more than $200 per month. And even if you take, and if you take rural households, you are talking about less than $100 per month. That's where the population is. So any technology that you talk about, you may talk about in international context, unless they can come down to affordable level in India has makes practically little impact. It is this that we find that we understood something 10, 15 years back, and in sector after sector, we are starting to make a difference. And the first sector where the difference was probably most noticeable was the telephony. Um, I remember I went to India in 1981, applied for a telephone. It took me eight years to get a telephone. Uh, in 1994, we had barely eight million telephones, and we sort of felt that we need to really expand. And suddenly the boom started from 98, 99 onwards. And today we are growing at six, five and a half million telephones per month. It's about 70 million telephones per year. It is the largest market in the world. Unbelievable market. And this has happened because suddenly we have learned to, operators have learned to make money at an average revenue of $7 per month. Now, if you looked at the income level, it would have been obvious that not more than $7 per month is possible for a large percentage of urban population. And this is exactly what we were able to do, and suddenly the whole game plan changed. And this is not something that has happened first time. In television also, we are stuck at about 10 million tele television till two things happened. One, there was a black and white television that was introduced in India at around $30. And suddenly, and number two, uh, cable TV got available at $2 per month. And suddenly from 10 million, it jumped to 100 million in a few years' time. Uh, and I believe that if going forward beyond 250 million, this growth will continue for the next two, three years. And then when we go to rural India, where the incomes are less than $100 per month, you really need, operator need technologies and business model which will work at $2 per month, at a half a cent per minute. These are the kind of things that we are trying to do in India. And both with the technological innovation, borrowing technology, developing technology, and as well as with the business model, upturning the business model to make things like this work. Now the real question today, telephony is happening. The key question is that large rural areas are still left behind. So can we connect the rural areas? Because that's where our 700 million people live. And number two, can we provide broadband? There's a fairly strong focus on broadband, there is a belief that 30 to 50 million broadband connections should be made available in the next few years. Now, of course, the incumbent operator fortunately has a copper wire going to homes, at least 50 million homes can provide DSL, very, very low cost. Something like $15, $20 is the CapEx cost. But what about the, the competition? And unless the competition moves in, the service quality does not improve. This is something that we have learned. And they need something else, they need something like broadband wireless. And one can get into what are people willing to pay. One has, we have done detailed analysis. And what we have come to a conclusion that to be able to, for an operator, wireless to make sense, it, one should deliver what is called nine bits per second per hertz per cell site. Now, unfortunately, no technology is coming close to that. And that's where we are getting stuck. 
Nothing can compete with even the low end DSL. Forget about the high end DSL. If you look at UMTS EVDO, best you maybe do is 3, 3.5 bit per second per hertz. Uh, maybe the, the uh, flash to FDM, which again Qualcomm has acquired, we believe can do slightly higher, maybe 4, 4.5 bit per second. Vimax, which is being talked about quite a bit, can also do something like 4, 4.5. At the same time, we developed a technology called broadband codec. I'll talk about it. It's a very intermediate technology. It's not a technology going forward which can give 10 bit per second per hertz. But I'll, I'll jump from here to basically what we have been trying to do at IIT Madras and link this whole wireless effort and our effort here. Our group consists of about now 18 faculty members. It grows every time. Um, it's, these are people, all of them were undergraduates from IITs, all of them came to this country, did their master's PhD, worked here for a few years and are returning back, suddenly seeing that there is a group which wants to do something for the country and are able to, is able to do something and they are kind of joining that. And we have incubated a large number of companies. Today we have about 1,500 engineers working in these companies all around the campus and we are trying to make a difference. We are the one who started with a very simple dream statement that we should get in, um, 100 million telephones. In 1994, we started saying that. And we worked at the policy level. We worked with operators. We worked on technology development. For example, wireless in local loop, just the time when Qualcomm came. Qualcomm, in fact, came later. We came up with a wireless in local loop technology called Codec Wireless in Local Loop Technology. And the interesting thing is that while uh, India did cross um, a billion population. This technology, which was developed at IIT Madras, completely did a business of around $200 million. And it's primarily feeding us, the royalty itself is feeding us about 3 to $4 million we get every year, and that's kind of feeding all of our research. When we had thought about 100 million, we thought that this will reach every part of the country, urban and rural. And somewhere in 2001, we found that the rural still does not make business sense for any operator. And we started, therefore, working with innovative technologies and business model to connect every village. And we created a company called Enlog, and the business model that we used was the business model of operator-assisted PCO. Operator-assisted PCO in mid-80s had made great difference in the country. They got put on every street corner, a shop which will run a PCO, such that it is within 50 meters of any home, and there are millions such PCOs earning quarter of the total telecom revenue. So we learned from there that aggregate demand, if you can't reach individual, um, get an entrepreneur to drive the demand. And this is exactly what we tried to do with going to every village, aggregated demand, created an internet come telecom phone kiosk, and uh, at a very low price, around $1,200, including a personal computer, um, power backup, camera, speaker, printer, everything, and including training. And we are able to start doing something like this. And we started providing communications. And soon we realized, yes, communication is very important in the rural areas. But their focus today is, can you pre be provide, education be provided? Can healthcare be provided? And can microenterprise be provided? And we started working on these things. And we changed our vision statement to double the per capita rural GDP of India using ICT. And we started creating a lot of companies. For example, we are told literacy is a big problem in the country and in the rural areas, and you'll never get anything. So we sort of said, well, computer doesn't have to be only for the literate. We created a small, uh, low cost, low bit rate, low bit rate video conferencing. And video conferencing became the main thing being used uh, between people, and that started the mechanism of communication. We even created a company which developed a complete office package, word processing spreadsheet. Um, um, database software in multiple Indian languages at a very, very low cost, fractional of the cost of Microsoft, and started deploying it. We're already starting to deploy uh, and connect the patients in the village, villages to the doctors in the city using this wireless connection, using video conferencing. And the doctor sort of said, oh, only if I could measure the temperature of the patient. And therefore, we created a um, a medical diagnostic kit. It is a small kit that sits in front of the computer. It has a stethoscope. You connect to the patient and the doctor remotely hears the heartbeat along with the video conferencing. The doctor can remotely measure the temperature, remotely measure the blood pressure, ECG measurement, and uh, pulse count. And the interesting thing is doing the whole thing at $300. That's what makes a significant impact, and today we are deploying it. We realized that this doubling the per capita rural GDP will not happen unless we are able to get finance in the village which can fund micro enterprises. 
And when we went to the bank sort of saying, now that you have internet connectivity, why can't you do internet banking? They said, yes, but we want physical delivery of the notes. And the cost of ATMs are very, very high. So we came with a very interesting ATM. We created a company and designed an ATM, which is about 1 16th of cost, cost of about $1,200. It uses fingerprint authentication. It, use, you, it uses uh, um, soil notes, and we started deploying that. At the same time, to try to help the agricultural community, we created a small weather monitoring kit which sits on top of the computer, uh, of the kiosk. It does the wind speed, um, wind direction, humidity, rainfall, pressure, temperature continuously and transport it. It enables us to do, number one, micro weather prediction. Number two, it is enabling a very interesting thing called rainfall insurance. Yeah, those of you who, who are familiar with Indian agriculture, rainfall is the only uncontrolled variable. Everything else is controlled. So that's what it requires insurance. And we are now measuring rainfall in every village. And we can introduce concepts like rainfall insurance. Well, this is, and we are doing all kinds of things. You know, it is the IT-enabled services which have changed India. Hmm? Urban India today is supplying services to the rest of the world. And we are sort of saying, can we take IT-enabled services to rural areas, from rural areas to do the work in the urban areas? And this is one of the examples of the work that was done in four villages. I mean, those who believe that people in the villages will not be able to do this work, there was four villages the work was done. One village translated the work into a local language. A second village did the flash animation. A third village did the voice recording. A fourth village integrated and delivered. Oh, what I'm trying to point out, what all can wireless technology or communication technology enable? That was a starting point, and then we started doing a lot of such things. Well, at the same time, we started focusing on broadband. As I told you, 50 million broadband connection for the next five years is a very strong desire of the nation, uh, that that's going to start transforming the society. And as I pointed out that it requires broadband connectivity, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but it also requires a device. Unfortunately, there are very few PCs in the home. One of the reasons there are very few PCs in the home is not just high cost, but also very difficult to manage and maintain. The, every time the virus strikes, something, the disk fails, backup, it, it just is impossible for a lower middle class person in India to start using something like this. So we have introduced, uh, introduced a company called Noetium and introduced a network PC, a thin client. It's a multimedia network PC, sits in, uh, in front of the broadband, the broadband comes to home, you put something like this, the server is located at, with the telcos, and every storage is at the telco. And, but the important thing, it functions just like a PC. You don't even know that you're not working on a PC. That's the key thing, and a lot of technology is involved in making that possible. You can work with Windows, you can work with Linux, you can work with Sun Solaris, you can do whatever you feel like. And a cost very, very small. Today it sells at around $80 plus cost of monitor. Huh? And this certainly is starting to transform. As far as the connectivity is concerned, uh, at the same time we, are, we have a vision that can India become the leaders in wireless technology. This is one of the key things that there is a desire in the country today that now that we are doing well, can next 10 years we can become amongst the leaders in a few technology areas. And wireless is one of the areas that we have kind of identified. We have created a center for excellence in wireless technology, which actually starts trying to do IPR work on the one hand, promote wireless in the country, number two, research in the country, number two, start participating in standard making bodies and even maybe define standards. But this is the kind of thing that we are starting to do. At Tenet Group itself, in wireless itself, we have eight faculty members, about 60 plus PhD, MS students, 60 BTEC, MTEC students, 80 plus project staff. So fairly strong people, and we are working with Tenet, Center for Excellence in Wireless Technology, and the companies. And we are working in all kinds of space, whether it's OFDM, CDMA, TDMA, increasing work on OFDM. And our work includes, on the one hand, research, um, on the, and all kinds of research in physical layer, dynamic research, allo resource allocation, multi-cell performance, and we are starting to file many, many IPRs. And NEMO FDMA is one of the key part of the work that we are doing. Besides doing teaching, product development, we are fairly focused on partnership and industrial consultancy. And we are de developing a whole lot of different technology. We are doing WiMAX, but WiMAX Plus. We don't believe that WiMAX will give us enough of what we actually need. We are doing correct wireless in local loop, satellite modems, GSM Pico station. For example, this is one of the broadband systems that we actually created. It delivers 256 or 512 kilobit per second connectivity to each user almost on a dedicated basis. One will say, why have we been able to do that when major technologies are not able to do that? We actually, this 
is a line of sight technology. Actually, we have deployed that very widely in India. We know how to do deployment at a very, very low cost. And once you learn that, you can start using line of sight technology in all kinds of things. Very simple thing. For years on, we have been teaching that the horizontal polarization and vertical polarization does not mix. Uh, but in all non-line of sight technology, they actually get mixed up. So what we actually have done is that we have used this to double the capacity. We have used multiple sectors and used all kinds of engineering thing, innovation, to really cater to the demand, today's demand. We clearly recognize that as a good either WiMAX++ or some version of other OFDMA or CDMA technology can start giving us equivalent to DSL. We probably will not need that because line of sight technology can have only so much life. But there was a problem now, and we kind of started trying to solve it. There's another very interesting work that we actually did. This is a very strong requirement in India. You know, I just mentioned in the beginning that today, uh, at $7 average revenue per user or $0.02 cents per minute, the cellular service is being provided. The key issue is that in rural areas, you need to provide at $2 per month uh, and uh, half a cent per minute. Now, how do you, when you use mobile systems, how do you distinguish between the users in rural areas and users in urban areas? And this is a thing that is bothering the um, uh, business people. And we are coming up with very, very interesting technology. For example, we have actually designed today a GSM Pico base station, GSM GPRS Pico base station, and we're putting it at $400. In every village, we've actually put one. And in that village, then the uh, uh, mobile communication. It's a mostly a software radio, a lot of D basically a DSP. And we have used the chipsets that are used in handsets, and therefore very, very low cost. We kind of modified it, upturned it, and are able to do, get something like this done. Similarly, we have come with a very interesting, very low cost Wi-Fi mesh technology. I know in this country, there is a lot of cities which are being wired up. We are starting to do work on that and doing something like this. Basically, I want to end by saying that, saying that India is a large wireless market, but only at the right price point. And India is thinking more and more in terms of its own initiative in evolving, influencing standard and developing the next generation technology. Rural India provides significant challenge coupled with immense opportunity and requires innovative technologies and business models. Thank you very much.